So you've set up a game server, like a Minecraft server, maybe from watching my Minecraft server video. And it works on your local network, but when you've tried to set up port forwarding so that you can play with friends on the internet, you ran into some issues. Maybe your ISP uses CGNAT, and you aren't able to get a public IP address. Or they block or restrict port forwarding on your router. Or maybe you just don't want to open up your firewall to expose a server to the public. Well today, we're going to solve all of these issues using a service called Ingrok. And the best news? We're going to do it completely for free. Stick around to see how. Ingrok is a secure tunneling service, which basically means there's a secure connection, or tunnel, between your computer and Ingrok's servers. And then, when someone makes a request on a specific URL and port to Ingrok's servers, that gets tunneled back to your computer. But essentially, it lets you run a public server on your home network without having to open any ports on your firewall. If you're curious to know more about how this works, you can always visit the Ingrok website. Ingrok has a free plan that we'll be using today, but this unfortunately has one really big pitfall. Every time we restart the Ingrok service, our URL for our server will change to a new random URL, meaning none of your friends will know how to connect to your Minecraft server. In this video though, I'm going to show you how you can use a Linux server, like the one I used in my Minecraft server video, to run Ingrok automatically whenever the system boots up, and also post a message to a Discord channel if your server URL changes. To get started, you'll need a working Minecraft server or other game server that only uses a single port, and then a PC running some form of Debian Linux with Docker installed and running. This can be the same machine that's running the game server, or a separate PC on your local network. If you're confused about the whole Linux and Docker part, don't worry, just check out my Minecraft server tutorial that should be linked in the description. In that video, I show you how you can install Ubuntu server and Docker onto an old PC, and that's the exact same system I'll be using in this video. If you want to use something other than Ubuntu server, that should be totally fine as long as you can get Docker installed. I even ran this same exact setup on a Raspberry Pi Zero just to test it out but know that there might be a few commands in this video that work differently if you use a different Linux distro. If you're unable to use Linux and instead have to do this on Windows, that's not a problem and I'll still be able to show you how you can run Ingrok to get to your server over the internet. But I won't be able to show you how to have it run automatically or update Discord if the URL changes, at least not in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so right now I am SSH'd into the Minecraft server we did in my previous Minecraft server video. So if I type in docker ps, and you watch that video, you should see these same two containers we set up, one for our Minecraft paper server and the other for DuckDNS. But for this, we're not gonna be using this DuckDNS because we're going to be using ingrok or ng, ngrok, ingrok. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. I think it's ingrok though, but I'm gonna call it ingrok for now. But yeah, we're gonna be using ingrok to expose our Minecraft server. And if you didn't follow my tutorial, that's not a problem. Um, basically, you just need to have a Minecraft server running on your local network that you can access. But anyway, if I actually open up Minecraft right now and I go to multiplayer here, I have this Minecraft server local. And if I go to edit, you'll see that I just have my local IP address, which is 192.168.1.138. And this server works. If I log into this, we can see that our server is running. I'm up on top of this tree. It is nighttime, and yeah, our server works. But it's only accessible from our local network, which is not super fun. So we're gonna use a cool thing called ngrok. So if I open up a web browser here, and I just Google search ngrok, or ngrok, I keep saying it different ways, sorry. But if we just search ngrok, we can go to the website and we're gonna say get started for free. And here you can go ahead and sign up. I'm gonna do that off screen. I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to create an account. So go ahead and create an account and I'll meet you here in just a second. Okay, great. So at this point, you should be at this screen here where we'll see a few things, including how to, where we can download Ingrok as well as set it up. Um, if you're doing this on Windows, I can actually go ahead and show you. We can click download for Windows. And if we open up our downloads here, we'll see this zip file, and we can just extract that here. In this folder, if we just run this ingrok.exe, 
Hey, this is Future Colton here. I actually forgot a step, so I'm just going to mention it now. Before you run the command that I'm about to run, head back over to the Ngrok website and find step two of the setup, which should include an Ngrok auth token command. You can copy that entire command, including your auth token that I have blurred out, and then right click to paste it into the terminal and hit enter, and that will set up your auth token that you need to have before you can run this next command. All right, back to the video. We should land in this terminal here, and I can actually just type in ngrok tcp 192.168.1.138, which is my Minecraft server local IP, and then colon 25565. We hit run, we should get this cool little interface here. And if I highlight this right here, and I right click it to copy it, and I go back to Minecraft and I hit add server. I'm going to call this Windows in Grok. And I'm just going to paste what we just copied there. I'm going to cut out all that TCCP. Uh, the, sorry, oh my gosh. I'm going to cut out all the TCP colon slash slash and just starting at that first digit. And I hit done. And right now I can actually access my Minecraft server over the internet. I am not accessing this on the local network. This is being tunneled through Ngrok, which is pretty cool. The problem though, is if I go back here and I hit Control C to quit, you see I immediately get booted from this. But that makes sense. Okay, we, we stopped the tunnel. Well, let's just do it again. We type the same command. And if I go here and try to access my server again, well, it's not going to work. Because if I go back to edit and I look at this server address, and compare it to what we have right here, it's different. This server address has changed and it will change every time this service, this ngrok application gets restarted. Meaning if our computer restarts or we just close this window, that's not fun. But there's a way to fix that. But unfortunately, I'm not gonna be doing that in Windows. I'm going to be doing that in Linux. So hopefully you can follow along with some sort of Linux machine. Um, I'm going to be using Ubuntu Server. If you want to watch my Minecraft video I did before, you can do that and follow along if you have an extra PC lying around or something like that. But for now, I'm going to quit this. I'm going to hit cancel. I'm just going to delete. Uh, we'll keep it there for now. It just won't work. Okay, back to the good stuff. So back here in Linux, we could do the exact same thing. We could do something like snap install in grok in grok, whatever, oop, sudo. Okay, so that's installed. So technically we could do in grok, tcp, and we don't actually have to do the IP address because the IP address, this is the machine that the Minecraft server is running on. So we can just do 25565, hit enter. And then same thing, we could copy this. Yeah, let's just do it. Let's right click to copy, go in here. We'll do add server. We'll call this one Ubuntu Grok. And we'll paste. Oh, Got to get rid of this slash. Hit done. And it's working once again, as we expected it to. That's not a surprise. But this still doesn't solve our problem. We still have the issue of this is going to, every time we just hit Control C to get back to our terminal, this is going to break and no longer work anymore, which is not fun. That's not good. So we're going to do something a little bit different. First of all, I'm going to do snap remove ingrok ah, sudo, dang it. That way we have a nice clean slate to work with. I'll go ahead and hit clear. What we're going to do instead is we're going to set this up to run as a service so that it will run 24 seven. Um, even if we restart our machine, it'll automatically restart in grok. And then I'm going to do something kind of cool so that anytime this IP address does change, which it will, there's not really a way to fix that unless you want to pay quite a bit per month. Every time this IP address changes or this URL changes, um, we're going to have something that will automatically post to Discord. So we'll get to that later, but first we want to set this up as a service. And a really easy way to do that, if we go down here to Google Chrome, put up a new tab, and we're just going to Google ngrok systemd. And the first thing that should come up here, and I'll have this link in the description by Vincent Su, I believe is how it's pronounced. We have this really cool thing that we can run that will automatically install ngrok and set it up as a Linux service just to make this process really, really easy. 
Um, but to copy this, we're going to need a few applications. We're going to need some, some packages installed on our Linux server. So we're going to go back here. We're going to run sudo apt update. And we can actually just go to ampersands and then sudo apt upgrade. Let's see if this works. My Linux skills are not the best. And then we'll do dash Y. I think this should work. This should update and upgrade all of our apt packages. Should update our repositories and then upgrade all of our packages. I'm getting better at Linux, guys, slowly but surely. Okay, and this might have taken a few minutes, but now that it's done, I'm actually gonna hit clear or type clear and explain what I just did because I realized I didn't do a very good job of it. So sudo is super user do, and then apt update, like I said, is going to update all of our apt repositories. The two ampersands are just going to do that command first and then follow that command with our second command, which was sudo apt upgrade, which is actually going to install all of the updates to all of our packages. And the dash Y is just going to automatically hit yes for any of the prompts. So I just wanted to explain any commands I do just to kind of help. So now we're actually going to use apt and these new repositories we have to install some stuff we need. So we need to do sudo apt install git and you can type a space zip space jq and i think that's it so you can just type those three in hit enter i should already have git installed we can hit y so you may already have some of these installed but we just want to make sure all three of these are installed cool now that we're done we can go back to Google Chrome to this Git repository and where it says code under HTTPS, we can hit copy. And then back in here, we can type Git. Uh, we'll make sure we're in our home directory first. So I'm gonna do CD or change directory and we can just put the little tilde or we can type slash home slash your username, which for me is Haven. We could also do, like I said, CD little tilde and then we should be in our home directory. So here I can type git clone. So we're going to clone this repository. We can right click, hit enter. And then now if we type ls or list, I, I think that's what it stands for. We should see we have this directory here, systemmd-ngrock. So if we go into that, so cd or change directory, systemmd, or sorry, systemd slash ngrock, ngrock. I keep saying that differently. I apologize. But if we cd into that and then type ls again, we should see all of this cool, fancy stuff. So here we're going to edit one thing, and that's this ngrok.yaml. And before we do that, I actually think it's safe to make a backup of this default um, file here. This is our configuration for ngrok. So if we type nano, which is just a text editor, and then we do ngrok.yaml, this is the how it's configured already. And so under here, auth token, uh, this is part of this script. Um, this is a kind of a variable here, so our auth, to auth token is going to get dropped in place here. But the rest of this, we can come back and edit, and we will. But before we do that, I'm going to hit Control x to exit. I'm going to type cp, and then ngrok.yaml, and then ngrok.bckp, or backup. Really doesn't matter what you call this. But basically, we're going to copy that file into a different file called ngrok.backup.yaml. So now if we type ls, we should see that we have this backup here. And so that's if we mess up anything in this YAML, we do have a backup we can default to. Not that big of a deal, but you know sometimes it's safe with configuration files. I like to do that. Now though, we can go nano ngrok.yaml again. And we're going to change some things. We're going to keep this auth token exactly as it is. Under region, we can change this. For me, I'm going to change it to US. We're going to make a new line here and we're going to type in web underscore ADDR or web address and then a colon. And then here you need to type in your IP address, your local IP address for your server. So 192.168.1.138 for me and then a colon and 4040. So what this is, is when we run ngrok, there's actually a web server that it runs that you can access on that machine to see information about all of the tunnels that ngrok is running. And this is how we're gonna be able to automatically update Discord. So we need to make sure that this web address is not 
the default, which is just localhost, because that's going to make it to where we can't really access this from a different machine or a different container or from our Docker container. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and type in your local IP address and then colon 4040 or port 4040. Under that, I'm actually going to type in log colon and then home or slash home slash your username. And then I'm going to type in ingrok.log. And so this is going to create a log file in our home slash Haven directory that will log information in case there's anything weird going on with ingrok so we can see that. That's completely optional, by the way. You don't have to do that. But yeah, I'm going to do that. Now down here under the tunnel section, I'm going to delete all of this. We still need to keep this tunnels here. But we're going to make two spaces underneath that and then type in MC. And this is just the name of our tunnel. So we're going to call it Minecraft, I guess. And then now four spaces on the next line, we're going to type in ADDR or address and 25565, which is the port that Minecraft uses. And then another four spaces underneath that. And we'll type in proto or protocol. And this uses the TCP protocol for Minecraft uses the TCP protocol. So we should be set at this point. So we can hit control X. It's going to prompt us to save. We can type Y and then we can hit enter again to save the file. And if we were to type in cat or CAT, I don't know the actual pronunciation of that, but CAT and then ingrok.yaml, this will just print out our file and we should see that it's all updated now. So now we can type in sudo dot. So that way we're in our current directory slash and then install.sh. And this is going to run this script. Um, be a little bit careful running scripts that you download off the internet. I actually went through and looked through the, the entire script, everything that was in this to make sure nothing was sketchy. But if you're not entirely sure, be cautious running scripts. But if you trust me and you trust this person, hit enter. Ah, I made a crucial mistake here. We need our auth token here. This command, um, this script here takes an argument, which is our auth token. So I'm going to go back over to our Ingrok website here. And you can either copy it down here. I'm going to have it blurred out. Or you can go up here to auth token and then hit copy. Got a lot of blurring to do here. And so we're going to type in our same commands, a sudo dot slash install dot sh, a space. And then you can right click to paste. And then now we hit enter. And it should run this script for us, which is going to install ingrok as well as set it up as a service. And so now we can actually type in system CTL or control or cuddle as I like to say status in grok. And we should see this nice active running goodness here. And that is what we want. That is exactly what we want. If you don't see this, if you see some errors, go back to your ingrok.yaml and make sure that that is all correct and there's not any weird punctuation errors or spacing errors. And then after that, you can go... So if we go back to our folder here, we have this install.sh script. We also have this uninstall.sh. So what we could do is type in sudo slash uninstall.sh, run that. We could go in and make any changes to if there was an error for some reason in our ingrok.yaml. We could type in nano ingrok.yaml. We could go in and fix this, hit control X, and then you'd have to hit Y again and then enter to save. And then now you can go back. You can hit the up arrow, by the way, to go look at previous commands you've typed in. So you could go up to sudo.install this whole command you ran with your auth token, hit enter. And then hopefully if we go back to system control or system cuddle status, in Grok, we should see this active running. So we're going to hit clear here. Okay, so with our system running, we can actually check that it's working. Because um, you notice now we don't have that window that pops up showing us our public URL that Ingrok provides because it's running in the background as a service. So one thing we can do is we can type in curl and then our IP address, colon 4040, that web address I was talking about earlier. And then we're gonna type in slash API slash tunnels. And if I were to hit enter here, we'd kind of get a whole lot of nonsense and that's not very helpful. So I'm gonna type the exact same command again. I'm gonna hit space and I'm gonna type in this little bar. I don't even know what this is called. 
that's embarrassing. I don't know what this 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 thing is called, so I apologize. Let me know in the comments what that's called. I should know. Um, and then we're going to type in JQ, which is that program we installed earlier, that package we installed earlier. I'm trying to get better at Linux here. Sorry. And then we're going to type in dot tunnels. And then we're going to do brackets zero. And so what this is doing is this is making a JSON query. So we're getting JSON back from this um, request we make to our web server. So this curl command is, uh, is going to make a request to the web server. We're going to get JSON back, which if you're not sure what that is, just ignore this next part. It doesn't matter. But if you do, we're making um, we're going to parse the JSON that's coming back. So we're looking at tunnels and then we're taking the first item in that, that list, that array trying to make sure I have my JSON right. We're taking that first item, and so if we hit enter, we should see this nice, pretty stuff here where we can see this public URL, which is what we're used to seeing. We can right-click that to copy it, go back to Minecraft, and we're going to edit our server here. And at this point, we really shouldn't be surprised when this works. Look at that. So this is pretty cool. And just to prove that this works, we're gonna disconnect. We're gonna go back to our server and I am going to type in sudo reboot. And that is going to restart our server. And once it comes back online, we should see that Ingrok is going to start automatically. Okay, so we're back in our Minecraft Linux server here. If I type in system CTL or system cuddle or system control, whatever you want to call it, status, ingrok, we should once again get this nice active running. But if I go back and run our curl command, we'll see that once again, this has still changed. There's no way of really getting around this unless you want to pay quite a bit of money to fix it. So if I go back in here, like we could do this again, and just keep this running. That's kind of what we have to do. Um, so right now it's working. Oh, yep, it's working. <laughs> I kind of got nervous for a second there. Um, so this is, as long as the server keeps running 24 seven, it doesn't crash or anything, this shouldn't change. But in the event that it does change, it would be really cool to have a, a good way for you and your friends to know that it changed and that you need to update that URL. So we're gonna do something kind of cool here, Discord. If I open up Discord here, I have this Minecraft URL text channel. And if I right, or if I just left click here where it says edit channel, if you go to integrations, and here where it says webhooks, you can hit create webhook. And we're gonna call this just MC server. Um, yeah. And we're going to save changes and copy this webhook URL. That's really important. And we're actually gonna just open up notepad really quick and I'm going to just paste this URL here into our notepad. Great. Now though, we're gonna run a cool little Docker container that I actually made. We can Google it maybe. Uh, let's see what happens if we Google it. Should be public. I just made it, so um, maybe we have to go to whatever. All these descriptions, all this stuff will be in here. All right, yeah, so if we go to Docker Hub and we just search Ingrok to Discord, you can see Hardware Haven, just made this two hours ago, has this cool Docker container here that you can run. And so there's some, some stuff here. We're actually gonna copy this CLI. But basically this is going to just run 24 seven and anytime our public URL changes from Ingrok, it'll send a, um, use webhooks to post an update in Discord. So we're gonna open up our notepad here we're gonna go down a few spaces. We're gonna hit, uh, we're just gonna paste this in here. So we can keep this name. So this is Docker runs. This is gonna run our Docker container. D uh, means detached, so it's gonna run in the background. This is just the name. Where it says API URL here, this is where we need to put in our 192.168.1.138 or whatever your um, API, or sorry, whatever the IP address is for your local machine that you're running this Minecraft server on. Where it says webhook URL, this is what we're going to delete this. And we're gonna copy this thing up here and put it where it says webhook URL. 
Um, now here where it says update user, this is optional. Um, you could change this to so that it could display whenever this gets posted in Discord, this would just change the the user. So I'm actually gonna call, just for funsies, we'll call this hardware haven. Oh, I can't spell hardware haven. And then update message, you can do a custom message like the server changed. I don't know, you could do whatever you want. There's a default for both of these. You can just leave it blank. Uh, where it says loop interval, we can update this to make it like 10 seconds. Um, 30 seconds is probably fine. I wouldn't really go that much faster because it's gonna be doing a little bit of extra processing for no reason. And then log level, um, we'll keep this at info for now. You can change this to error or warning if you wanna be able to see the logs but only see um, the important stuff. And then we'll make sure this restart unless stopped um, is on. That way this will, if for some reason this crashes, it'll just restart and keep going. And then this is the name of that image, the hardware haven slash ingrok to, ingrok to discord. So we can copy this entire command here and we should be able to go back into our server because we have Docker set up, right click, hit enter. And man, we're just gonna hope for the best here. <laughs> Okay, I'm kind of silly. I'm not sure exactly which one caused it, but it's smart to go in here and put all of these strings of text in double quotes, at least the ones that have all these weird characters, because it's possible that those can throw some weird things at Docker. I think it probably was something in here or these exclamation points. I'm not entirely sure, but if we put quotations or double quotes around these strings and we, you know, we can put it here to be safe as well and even up here why not just make sure you have double quotes around all of your environment variables here so we'll select all of this copy go up here right click to paste hit enter and now we're really going to hope for the best okay this looks good okay so now if we type in docker ps we should see our minecraft server our duck dns we're not using anymore as well as this hardware haven in Grok to Discord. And so if we type in Docker logs in Grok to Discord, we should see that it's starting. And because our ingrok is running, we have this new public URL found and it posted to Discord. And if we go to Discord, we should see, haha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know what happened here. You know what, you know, we're, there's bug fixes about, there's there's plenty of bugs to be fixed here. We're gonna go in, we're gonna get rid of these two arguments. Just, yeah, we'll just cut those out. And we'll select all of this, we'll copy. We're gonna go back up here. We're gonna run docker stop and grok to discord. Yeah, we'll do that, we'll stop it. Once it's stopped, we can go back and run docker remove in grok to discord and we're going to post this command in without those extra arguments because it kind of it kind of broke it so just just don't do that just keep it simple keep it simple stupid right so now if we go docker ps we should see we have these running and if we go back to discord we can see we have a new server url and yeah look at that so just to test it we can go back here we can say system CTL, control, cuddle, whatever. Stop in Grok. Type in my password. And then now if we were to go system cuddle status in Grok, we could see that it's stopped. It's not running. So we can go system cuddle start in Grok. Type in my password. Status. We see it's running. And we see we just got a new post here on our Discord server showing our new IP address. And if we copy the, we want to get rid of that TCP colon slash slash, we can copy this, go to Minecraft. We'll update our server here because if we refresh, we'll see that it's not working because our IP address changed or our URL changed. We can go in here and we're going to change this address to our new one, hit refresh and look at that. Now all of our Discord buddies know what our new Minecraft server address is. Isn't that cool? 
I truly hope this video was helpful and has made using the free version of Ingrok less of a headache. If this all seems like too much, you can pay $10 a month for the pro version, which lets you reserve a TCP address that won't ever change, so by all means, feel free to do that. If you have any issues, uh, you can leave a comment here, but Google can also be your friend, especially if you run into an error in Linux. You can also head over to the Hardware Haven Discord and ask a question on the tech support channel. This is YouTube, so as always, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. But that's about all I have for this one, so as always, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.